sir. I, I believe that I did. Uh, our MEF Sergeant Major, Sergeant Major Brad Castle, the real McCoy. Good afternoon, everyone. I, I really have no prepared comments whatsoever. To be honest with you, just about five, ten minutes ago, I just started thinking about what to say. And, and here's the reason why. Um, the word honor, and, and Lieutenant Colonel Canelero, he, he gave a description and a definition. But the word honor to me, there, there's many descriptions, there's many definitions of what that word means and what it stands for, etc. Uh, and, and I could probably ask a lot of people within the crowd here, and, and I'd hear many different definitions. But really, it's kind of broad. It, it's kind of broad, and to me, it, it's got to come from the heart. Because heart, the character, and everything else is really what honor is all about. So all I'm going to do is, I really have no clue what, what the, what's about to come out of my mouth. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let what comes out of my heart kind of speak for me. But it's pretty ironic because on the way up here, I was a little ahead of schedule and I came from uh, some other event down at Mainside. And I stopped up at the uh, Horno Chow Hall. I, I like going to Chow Hall. Uh, not that the food's the best, uh, but I think it's good. But I like going to Chow Hall because there's always Marines in the Chow Hall and I can sit down and, and eat with them. And it gives me an opportunity to kind of pick their brain about what's going on, um, talk to them, ask, answer questions, and it's always great conversations. But I was sitting down with these four Marines. And as I was, as I was sitting down with them, um, they were telling me they were getting out of the Marine Corps. And I tell you, I got a couple of frustrations, that, things that frustrate me. Suicide frustrates me, uh, several things frustrate me. But one of the things that really frustrates me is, is, is when a, a young man or woman who at some point in their life decided to do something greater and better in themselves and, and leave the comforts of their home and their family and their friends and everything else and raise their right hand and swear to support and defend and then voluntarily get on a plane or a bus or a car or whatever and go to boot camp knowing that for three months you're going to be somewhere with strangers, unfamiliar territory, with, with a guy with a round campaign hat screaming at you, but you volunteer to do that. And especially in time right now when our nation's at war. And yes, we are still at war. We still have Marines and sailors and airmen and soldiers. We still have them in harm's way. I just got back from the St. Con AO. They are still in harm's way. And we have Marines every day doing training, inherently dangerous training. Every day doing things to prepare to possibly go and, and do our nation's uh, battles. But while I was in the Chow Hall, I was talking to these four young Marines, and they were talking about how they were, were, were going to get out, and, and their experiences in the Marine Corps, and, and how it was a little bit negative, they couldn't wait to get out, etc. To me, a, a part of honor is, is there's going to be, reality in life, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be bad days, there's going to be good days. There's going to be bad leaders, there's going to be good leaders. There's going to be good people you work next to. There's going to be bad people you work next to. That's life. That's reality. That's everywhere you go. Everything you do, is you're going to face that. But to me, honor is, it, is you can't control a lot of those other things, but you can control what's inside you and what you do yourself. And the Marine Corps is really a great place if you make it that way. If you as an individual works hard and, and have integrity and, and, and do the right thing. And, and you know what? You're not always going to every day do the right thing. You're not. I haven't, and neither has anybody else. You know why? Because we're human beings. And human beings make mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's a part of living. That's a part of maturing. It's a part of life. Even at my age, I still make mistakes because it, it, we're humans. But honor is making mistakes and then living up to it and counting for it and learning from it and, and doing better and working hard, and, et cetera. And, and I told those four young Marines, I said, you know what, whatever, whatever happened around you, make the, the experience the best for you. 
Because you can't control all those other things, but you can control what you do. And it's what you make of it, and it's everything that you make is how good you're going to get out of it. Because me personally, honor another part of honor to me is reputation. And I don't, you know, everywhere I go, people want to shake my hand and everything else. But you know what? I, 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 to me, the only really compliment that I can receive is when somebody comes up and shakes my hand and says, says, hey, Sergeant Major, you taught me something. Or, hey, Sergeant Major, I, I saw your example you set, and, and it kind of inspired me. Or, hey, Sergeant Major, you gave a class, or you did this, or not for heroics or battlefield. And, and, and I was talking, after I left the Chaha, I went out to the smoke pit, which is another great place to hang out, because you really get great intel. <laughs> I don't smoke, but you get great intel going up to the smoke pit talking to Marines and sailors. And one of the young Lance Corporal said he, 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 he was, he was going to get out because he hasn't seen combat. He didn't feel worthy. He didn't feel like he did his job because he hasn't had combat experience, and et cetera, et cetera. I, I tell you, don't let anything like that define your worthiness or, or who you are or what you, what you represent or how how satisfactory something has gone. What should be most important is just the Marine to your left and your right, whether it be in training or wherever you're at, says that they trust you, says that they can depend on you, says that they, they, they will miss you. And that's what's most important to me is the reputation. When I go out the door and somebody doesn't say, hey, I recognize you for your heroic in battle, but more so, hey, Sergeant Major, you taught me something, I, and I can trust you, and I can depend on you, and I appreciate your example. And, and reputation to me is far, far more important. It, it is. It, 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 it's kind of a driving factor to me. I, I just had surgery a week ago. I'm supposed to be on convalescent leave. <laughs> In fact, the general, don't tell him I'm out here. He probably would not be happy. He's TAD. <laughs> but I went out to a range just two days ago, five days post-op. Not the smartest thing I've ever done, but the reason why is because I ran into a, a company commander who just happened to be from one of my former companies, and, and not thinking, I said, hey, I'll go out with you. And so I already gave my word that I would be there. And once I give my word, it's important to me not to back out of it. But again, and, and I'm probably a hypocrite here because I'm telling Sergeant Major Pinkton to watch out for his health, but point is I know what I can I know uh, I know how to be smart and when to do it etc but I gave my word and that's important and when I was out at the range wearing all that gear running up and down the range with 20 year olds that's not the easiest thing to do especially five days post off but the reason I did it was because and I don't know if anybody noticed I don't know if anybody really even cared but just the example for those young brains to be able to see somebody as old as I am running up and down the range carrying the same gear and everything else. Because I mentioned earlier about one of our other frustrations, suicide, everything else, having a resiliency to be able to push through when you're challenged. Having a resiliency to be able to not give up when you've had a bad day. Because we all have bad days. We all have bad experiences. But you gotta push through. You gotta push through mentally. You gotta push through physically. You gotta, and, and the biggest thing is, and that's what's great about an organization like the Marine Corps is you are not alone. You are never alone in the Marine Corps. You never are. And that's why I said earlier about what's most important to me. What's most important to me is that somebody knows that I'm there for them, that I have their back and they, and, and, and they have mine. That's what honor to me is, is, is those types of things about character. Because every day we have temptation. Every day you have to make a decision about right or wrong, because there's temptation in front of you every single day to do the wrong thing. And you know what? When we're young, when we mature, it comes easier, but we still have it at every age, every day. That's, again, a part of life. But we've got to, we've got to develop those character skills, the honor, you got to care, reputation, everything else, to be able to push through and make the right decisions and, and, and do the best you can. It ain't important that we run a 300 PFT, it's just important we give the, that we try the hardest we can. It ain't important we're the next meritorious or NCO of the quarter, it's just important that we serve honorably. 
And when you walk out the door of whatever it is you do, whether it be the Marine Corps, a job, or later in life, you walk out the door being able to say, I gave it my best, I did it honorably, I did it with integrity, and everybody says, hey, there goes an individual I trust. That's what honor is. It, 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 and it, 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 it's utterly important. So everybody has a different definition. I, I really had nothing prepared. I, that's just the way I see it. Um, and, and, and in this audience right here, I, I echo with Colonel Buell's opening comments. Uh, there's several generations here. Uh, some of the generations here is what inspired me to join the Marine Corps. I would read books about the Vietnam generation, the Korean generation, World War II generation. And it's what inspired me, stories of, of, and I'm not talking just about stories of combat, I'm talking about stories of service, <coughs> stories of sacrifice, courage, and everything else. And then there's younger Marines and sailors here. And I hope that some of our generation has inspired you. And you have got to realize that your generation is also going to inspire the next generation by the example you set. That's why reputation to me is important and, and you set the example because there's always somebody who's watching you. And, and to me that's important. That's extremely important to me. There's always someone watching you, how you speak, how you talk, how you act, how you walk, how you carry yourself, and your demeanor and the whole routine. You gotta realize that. So to some of the generations here, I, I'm not gonna say older generation, but some of the generations here, thank you for inspiring me. And for the younger generation here, people like Colonel Buell and some of the other folks here that have inspired you. Now inspire the next generation. Fair enough? Okay. All right, that's all I got. Well, I could keep going, but, <laughs> but I'm not going to. Thank you. Oh, yeah, you got a question? Yes, sir. What's the payoff in acting honorably if everyone else is acting dishonorably? For example, you're in the business world, and uh, there's, as I mentioned earlier, just a lack of integrity. People don't do what they say they're going to do. They lie to get ahead and you're the honest guy. What's the value in that? Is there? Okay, it's a good question. What is the value in doing the right thing, acting honorably, act, acting with integrity if you're surrounded by people who don't? Well, what I would say is that sounds like life. That sounds like reality, and you're gonna have that. And I don't know if this is the right answer, this is the right answer, or this is the answer I see it. I don't really, to me, I can't control necessarily everyone else, but I still can control myself. So if others are not acting honorably with integrity, there's three things I can do. One, first and foremost, I, I don't have to let it affect the way I do things. I still will live the best I can and make the right choices and do the right things the best I can. But again, I'm human, I'll make mistakes. Secondly, by example, hopefully, by example, by me trying to do the right thing, by me having integrity, it will help rub off on those around me. And thirdly, the natural mentorship coach, teacher, leader will try to affect that population also. But at the end of the day, what's most important is that you don't let it change or control you. That you still do the right thing. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? Okay, anybody else? Okay. Just go.